Adobe Illustrator is cross-platform, meaning it works on both Mac and Windows. And because Macs and Windows machines act a little different, some of the hotkeys will be different and I'll try to show you both. Now, when you go to download, make sure to download the right one for your operating system. Now, if you haven't done so at this point, please download Illustrator. You should not run into any problems, but if you do, please contact Adobe. They'll help you out. Now, if you haven't already done so, I want you to create a folder wherever you put new folders on your computer or drive. Name it Digital Fabrication. Now, this is where you want to be saving all your drawings for this course. While I'm on the topic, we'll be making a bunch of drawings in this course, and you'll need to be pretty organized as we go. If you have a desktop that looks like it blew up, just make sure your course folder does not suffer the same fate, at least for this class. We'll be going back and forth a lot using drawings within drawings, so you'll want quick access. I'll put the soapbox away now. So now open Illustrator. It'll take a minute before it does anything, and I'm going to assume that no one has seen this program, so I'll be going pretty slow. Once open, you'll be looking at a blank screen with some symbols and text all over the place. Let's change some stuff to make life easier as we go. And when you open up Illustrator for the first time, you'll be in the Essentials workspace. And I like to work in the tracing workspace. So all the tools and palettes I use will be there for me. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to click on the Windows menu at the top of your screen. Go to Workspaces and select Reset Essentials. This will make sure we all have the same screen. Now I want you to scroll down to the Workspaces and select Tracing, and then Reset Tracing. Scroll down and select the word Transform. Transform is, it's a palette we use a lot. Now this is going to put three new palettes on your screen, but it's just floating out there and we'll need to dock it. Let's left select, hold and drag each of these palettes and dock them with the existing palettes on the right. Now lastly, I'm going to have you change some of your preferences so we're all on the same page. Windows users find this under edit and Mac users will find it under this AI symbol. Once we open the drawing, you will also see it under your menus or Command or Control K. Sometimes redundancy is good, sometimes it's confusing, but better to have more options than less in this case. Now in the Preference window, I'm going to have you change a few things in the Units category. Under Units, let's change General to Inches. Sorry for those who use metric. Under Stroke, switch that to Millimeters so we can interface with some lasers. And under Type, let's switch that to Points because that's what we're familiar with with word processing software. Now select OK. Great. So housekeeping is done, so let's open a new drawing. Now up in the File menu, select File New, and you'll have a new document window open up. Windows and Mac will look a bit different, but they should work the same. Now where it says Untitled, we're going to change that to 12 by 12 template. And we're going to change the height and the width to 12 and the unit menu to inches. Now change the color mode to RGB if it isn't already. Let's select Create. You'll see a white square on your screen. Now, if you don't see a full square on your screen, go down to the lower left-hand corner and select Fit on Screen. This white square is called an artboard, and it represents your material. So to backtrack a bit, what we just did is make a template that we've not totally finished it yet. Our new template is based on an artboard, or in our case, a material size of 12 by 12 inches. And we're using an RGB as our color model. And we'll be making and downloading other templates in the future to match our material size. But our color model will must remain RGB. Now, RGB stands for red, green, blue, and it's really important that it does not change. Some machines we'll be using need true RGB colors in order to get their instructions. Laser cutter software and services will trigger a warning if the wrong color is uploaded to them, and it won't allow it to cut or engrave anything. So make sure it says RGB up in the tab. Now if it says CMYK, then we'll have a problem we have to fix. Now that we have a white 12 by 12 artboard, let's go to the File menu and select Save as Template. Great. Now whenever you open a new drawing, you can choose this template or any other ones you make, and it'll always look the same. Uh-huh.